This here is potentially another viewer's broken gaming PC. And this is where this PC resided, a home that was recently flooded by a major hurricane here in central Florida. Now in hindsight, the owner after this happened was super cautious with his system. He never powered it on in fear of something else going wrong. He's unsure of where the water level actually reached. He does know that it at least touched the case because there were water marks about a few inches up from the bottom that he's since cleaned up. But that would mean that the power supply was at least partially submerged. It looks like most of the components higher up, thankfully, weren't touched by water uh, and we're unsure of just how salty this water was since it was inland. There's a lot of freshwater lakes in central Florida. It's possible this might have been a brackish or more fresh water intrusion into his home, which would be better than the salt water alternative, uh, but still no good. And that's why I'm unsure if this even works. It hasn't been powered on since this event several months ago. So what we're going to do is go into this assuming there's already an issue with the power supply. I obviously can't confirm that until we isolate it, but that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to remove it from the remaining components in this system since it is the lowest component in the case. I, have, I imagine that that was where water probably affected things the most. Even if power wasn't running through the power supply at time of flooding, it's still not something you ever want to have near a power supply, whether it be salt or fresh. And all that goes without saying, if for whatever reason we can't get the system to power on or post with the hardware in here, say everything is totally fried, which I doubt, but I suppose it is possible, then in a separate video, we will build this owner a brand new system. Again, it's unlikely, but I definitely don't want this owner going home without a working rig, especially given what he's already been through. I also wanna thank the owner for allowing us to share these photos with you. I think this provides important context why we're being so cautious with this rig. You can see water was several feet high inside his home. And uh, that's why we're gonna take every precaution I think is necessary to preserve what might still be working in this rig. Are you ready? Stay with me. The Antec P20C is a beautiful mid-tower PC case fitted with a massive metal mesh front panel, three premium fans, and loads of additional hardware support. Install both a 360mm AO up top and up front simultaneously, or up to three 140s up front, take your pick. Each case includes USB 3.2 Type-C support, plenty of rubber grommets, cable tie points, and more for an ultra-clean build that doesn't sacrifice in the way of function. You can even fit oversized dual CPU motherboards in here for a crazy workstation build. Choose between the white variant with matching white cables and hardware, and the black ARGB variant with three ARGB fans and hub included. The Antec P20C is the one you don't want to get away, so consider it for your next PC build. I've already followed through. Learn more by clicking the links below. Now, for those who are wondering, the specs of this rig before we dive into things, it's an LGA 1151 motherboard, so that's, uh, what, several Intel generations old by this point. GTX 980 graphics card, 16 gigs of DDR4, of course, a 650 watt Cooler Master power supply, and an older Corsair case. It also looks like he has two storage drives in here. One's a hard disk drive, and one is a solid state one back here. This is a 250 gig. I think this is where his operating system is, and he said his games primarily exist on this one, which is slower, it makes more sense. Uh, we're going to also verify that these work. We'll make sure that the system at least boots into Windows. If it doesn't, then I'm going to tell him that if he has anything sensitive on these drives to reach out to a data recovery specialist. Uh, yeah, that ain't that ain't my specialty. And like I said, the first thing on my agenda is to remove this original power supply. And again, we will be testing this, just not while it's connected to anything else vital in this system. So far, it does look pretty good. We can kind of see through the grill here on the side. I don't see any corrosion of any sort, so I'd be surprised actually at this point if this didn't work. The remaining wiring back here all looks to be in check. Just wanted to give this a run through before we connect a new power supply, uh, just in case we get thrown off by anything that's not detected once the rig is powered on. Speaking of, let's get the new unit in here. The Pure Power 12M from Be Quiet is in nearly every sense of the word a better power supply than what was originally in its system. This not only has an 80 plus gold certification, but it's also fully modular versus semi-modular as before, and it has a 200 watt bump up to 850 in total. This will provide additional headroom for when he inevitably upgrades this graphics card and platform down the line. He won't have to worry about a power supply upgrade as well. The Pure Power 12M also comes with a 10 year warranty, which is the kind of peace of mind you should be after when shopping for your next power supply. I want to thank Be Quiet for continuing to be a product sponsor of this playlist. You can learn more about this unit and others via the links below. For now though, let's get these cables connected and we'll throw it into the rig for a first time power on since the flood. I'm only going to power vitals here, so graphics card and platform, actually really the graphics card we could also omit. 
Uh, I think that this chip does have integrated graphics, but I'm not gonna power on the drives and there's a good reason for that. So if you notice, this hard drive here is basically in line with the upper portion of the power supply. And it is possible that water maybe touched this. I don't think that alone would be enough to damage this unless it was salt water and it corroded fairly quickly. Uh, but I'm just going to play it safe and check this independently because it is possible water did get in here. So here we go then. The moment of truth, I suppose at least for the primary components. Let's see if things power on. Uh, power button, where is it? Ah, here it is. Okay, uh, so far, so good. That pump is definitely working. All the things are quite loud. And that is a post. That's great news. What is going on? Is it the fan making that noise? I think these fans are just running at full speed for some reason. Or, well, one of them is. So one of them's connected. Ah, yeah. That would be the pump header. So yeah, that's probably set to 100% RPM by default. Let's try the header next to it. Ah, that is that is so much quieter. Now I am noticing that CPU temps are rising quite quickly, but I think this is a result of the pump not being powered on. I thought what I was feeling in the tubes was the pump churning fluid. I think that was just the left fan just spinning super fast and vibrating the entire unit. Uh, DOCP or X XMP actually uh, is enabled. Looks like we have a base clock overclock here. It's 103 instead of 100. I'm not gonna touch any of this. Uh, it does seem stable. So I'll go ahead and power the pump on, make sure those temps drop, and then we'll reconnect his drives. Aha, uh -huh. so this would explain why those temps were high. Uh, this is actually bro Actually, the key is broken as well. We need to make sure that we connect this correctly or the correct way since there's no key now for this uh, SATA power cable. But I think we're okay because the pad looks to be mostly intact. So I think everything now is back where it belongs. You see, we cleaned up cable management a bit. I think it looks really nice um, all around. You know, it's an older system, but uh, you know, for the age of the hardware, it looks really good. Could use a bit of a cleaning. You see, we've got some dust gathered on top of the hard drive cage and whatnot, but uh, that's a very simple fix. So now with everything reconnected, let's try powering it on one last time, and then we can move on to this guy right here, which um, may be okay. Remember, we need to verify CPU temperatures this time around. We need to make sure that that AIO is actually on and the pump is churning fluid. So that's our post right away. I think it should boot into Windows. From what I was told, yeah, it looks like there was an operating system on here to begin with. Uh, I do wanna hop into the BIOS though and just let things idle for a few minutes. And you can see here, we've already booted into Windows. For starters, yes, this time around, Fluid is definitely moving through the loop, which is a good sign, but we still need to verify that temps are okay. We still might have a clog or something. A few moments later. We are looking good, folks. Temps have stayed in the low 30s for several minutes. That's a great sign. I feel like I have to clarify this. I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, Greg, just ignore the comments. Don't let them get to you, blah, blah, blah. I, I literally have to say this. I have to, because if I don't, I feel like people get the wrong impression and that does fester in the comment section and elsewhere. My goal with this playlist is to simply fix systems. This is called fix or flop, not upgrade or flop or something like that. Yes, occasionally we do upgrade components. We'll swap things out just to be on the safe side, just like we did here with the power supply. However, given how old the system is, I am not inclined to upgrade anything else. I'd much rather save that hardware for systems that genuinely need replacement parts. If they happen to also be upgrades, so be it. In fact, sometimes that's intentional. But uh, in this case here, the rig works perfectly fine as is. The graphics card, yes, is quite old, but it still works. The platform works. Heck, the case is super old. That would be a fairly easy upgrade. But I don't want to swap him out of this case either, mainly because he's got a five and a quarter inch drive bay up top with an optical disk drive in that slot. So uh, in any case I would upgrade him to now would completely omit that. I'm not sure what he's using this system for, what he will be in the future, but I don't wanna strip him of any of the current benefits this case has. And some, to be fair, like the older cases anyway. At this point then, we can go ahead and set aside the desktop. It looks like everything in here it functions properly. I don't see any corrosion, any physical issues. Everything's connected. And I've even let it idle for a few minutes just in Windows. I don't notice any artifacting or anything. So nothing that warrants a replacement at this time apart from maybe that power supply. I will clean this rig before I give it back to the owner. But uh, other than that, it's ready to be dropped off. The remaining question then is the old power supply. Does it work? I think it will. Let's check. For this phase of the video, I'll be using our Passmark inline PSU tester. You can see we've got our connectors on the backside here. 
And what we're gonna do is run a small current through the power supply. It'll read those ripples and things through here and tell us whether or not the unit is sound. That said, I'm going to stress to the owner and I'm gonna stress to any of you watching this who might be in a similar boat, that power supplies like these be kept far away from other precious hardware, whether or not an inline tester like this tells us that things are okay. This does not bestow any sort of crazy load synthetic, you know, array of benchmarks on this thing. It doesn't get very hot. Um, there is current running through it, but it's, it, again, it's not anywhere near the full capacity of what this can put out. And that's why we're only really just scratching the surface here. When it comes to units like these, they often cost a lot less than other components in a rig, and it's not worth you know, risking those over trying to reuse this. The owner already has a replacement unit. He didn't have to pay for that at all. Um, so I, I'd recommend he recycle it. Um, but uh, it's going to be giving back to him because it's, it's his ultimately. I, I just am you know, kind of fiddling with it at this point. So let's get things connected here and uh, see if we get any sign of life. Power this on here first. That should give us, yes, some sign of life. This, of course, is powered by the unit in question. We're going to click this power button here and that should I should turn things on. So fan spinning sounds okay in there. We aren't getting any warning sounds of any kind. The voltage from the 24 pin is all a pass. Ripple is pretty darn low. Timings look good. Slew rate looks good. Wow, this is a, uh, yeah, this is a working unit. I suppose we shouldn't be all that surprised. Like I said earlier, it didn't seem at least physically like anything was wrong with it. Um, and you very well could just repurposes, put it in some other rig again. I'm not going to out of principle. I I sincerely hope that the viewer doesn't, although it is his to do with as he pleases. Um, you just never know. If, if water did touch this, if something got in there and corroded just a small little SMD, I mean, that could turn into a big issue later when the power supply experiences a heavy load. I think it just turned off. Yeah, which it does when it gets when it gets too hot. Okay, so this looks like a pass. The real test for something like this would be to actually treat this as an inline tester and run power cables from the out connections here to the system in question. From there, you could obviously, you know, run your benchmarks and things, put the power supply under a heavy load and monitor, you know, heavy wattage loads and things. Uh, but I'm not going to do that again for reasons I just discussed. I just don't want to connect it to any of my hardware and risk something going wrong. What an experience then. Uh, sorry there were no fireworks. Uh, you, you just never know going into something like this. I played it super safe and I know that's probably a bit uh, frustrating for some of you. You're probably screaming at me telling me this power supply is totally fine. But again, you look at the pictures and you see where exactly this system sat. And uh, you just don't take chances with stuff like that. Whether the system is super old or super new, it makes no sense to take that kind of risk when we're talking about a power supply that only costs between what, 60 and $100. This system at this age is still worth far more than that. And uh, that's why I took the precautions I did. Could you have been even more cautious? Sure. Could you have tested individual components and separate rigs to isolate them even further? Sure. I didn't think that was all that necessary because again, physically, the case, the, the rig overall looked fine, including the unit, but um, this is just what I would do in a situation like this. So maybe going forward, if God forbid something like this happens to you or a loved one, you'll know how to better approach a rig that uh, could potentially have issues. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And again, I'm very sorry that there wasn't uh, more to see and witness in this one. It looks like everything worked out of the gate. But uh, if you've been working around PCs for a while, you're probably aware of just the, uh, I don't know, the false alarms, right? I mean, even my own wife, she brought her iPad into the Genius Bar. She's got Apple Care on it. And she thought that it was completely bricked after a power outage. Turns out it just boots right up. She just needed to hard reset it. Um, it, it happens. It even stumped me and I thought I was hard resetting it. We got no response from the cable or from whatever button combinations we were trying. And, and we, we looked pretty dumb uh, when, we, when we took it in. But uh, it, it happens to all of us, I think, at, at some point or another. And uh, I think the best outcome here was achieved. With that, I'm going to get out of here and check out relevant links in the description, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.